Hi, and welcome to this episode of I've Got This Kid. I'm your host, Sharina Williams, licensed speech and language pathologist, homeschooling mom of two, wife of one, here to answer all of your questions, speech, language, play, development, homeschooling, all that other stuff that falls in between. It's always a pleasure to be here. I have had a wonderful time this month just talking about real topics, real tools. We talked about the brain and the gut and the relationship. We talked about navigating insurance. We talked about the relationship between clinician and world changer. And now this week, we're going to be talking about community access, tools for a stronger, supportive community. Why? Because like I always say, we're better together. If you don't feel like we're better together, try being an island for so long and you'll find out. Mm, mm, mm. Don't work. Don't work. Even if you're not talking to other people, sometimes just being around other people, just, I don't know. It's like food for the soul. Even in COVID, like it's, it's food for the soul. Masked up and all. Masked up, Lysol, hand sanitizer, the whole nine, six feet. It's something about seeing people and just having that access. It just makes us better. So community access can happen in three different ways. One, those who ally with you to support you and your family, the people that help work on your goals, the people I talked about last week, us wonderful therapists. Ah. Two, community that's on the journey with you. Mm. Fellow parents, peers with similar experiences, other little sugars who look like your sugar. That's community. Three, community education. Those who provide education, information, what to expect. Sometimes that could be in form of a therapist. Sometimes that has to happen outside of your therapy team. Not necessarily making a Google search, but really having a community of people who provide education, information, what to expect. And that can come from different places. That can come from different workshops, seminars, your pediatrician sometimes. Even sometimes this stuff, they don't specialize in everything. They're generalists. They know a lot of good stuff. And so some of your questions may not apply to them. Some of it may. It just depends. But in essence, community education, (laughs) y'all. Neglecting any one of these areas, it can create isolation. Isolation can make a world changer feel alone, which then can hinder progress, which can impact understanding the diagnosis. Understanding your sugar's diagnosis is the equivalent of not understanding what food to put in your body and why. There's no nicer way I can say it. When you or your sugar gets a diagnosis, it's almost like you have to learn about a new world, even if it's something mild. You have to learn all of this new unexpected stuff this information that comes along with that diagnosis and not having that information, not knowing about signs and symptoms and how to handle and how to cope. It can hinder the progress in a way to where when a behavior occurs, you're not sure how to handle it. So it could be misinterpreted. It may not be the best approach. The explanation to the the greater world may not be what it should be or complete in its description. And it also helps you find peace, understanding what's going on, understanding your sugar. The more we know and understand the greater world around us, the, the more we can have peace about stuff and make sense of stuff that may not make sense without having that information. Another thing can occur, defensiveness when dealing with others. Oh, this one breaks my heart. This breaks my heart. Because you might put yourself in a place to where you're defending, always feeling like you have to defend your child's behavior. There's nothing worse than always being on the defensive because then eventually you're walking on eggshells all the time and feeling like you're being attacked, even when you're not. (laughs) And, And this happens. This can happen. And it can happen with family, people who may be asking simple questions, trying to understand why is sugar doing this? Or they might come at you in a a more aggressive way. You need to get help. Mm. How many of my world changers by show of hands could say that that's been a position that they've been in? 
It's a real thing. And then you become defensive when friends are around, especially if friends have other sugars and their sugar is doing what typically developing peers are doing and your sugar is is showing some behavior. And now you're having to defend in those situations with your friends. And that's not a fun thing either. And so this is why we have to understand that diagnosis so we can explain intelligently that this is what's happening. This is why this is how we deal with our greater community, went out in the community. I had a world changer get attacked when in a restaurant because her neurodivergent child did something to another table and the people at the table didn't like it. And it was something that was not likable because person was reactive and they didn't have the world changer didn't have the time to explain that party at the next table got physically aggressive. This stuff happens. It's not always talked about, but it does happen. And so you imagine that as a world changer, if that happened while you're out at a restaurant that your sugar does something, then now you're on eggshells every time it's time to go out. And then you're on eggshells with the greater community around you who don't understand. And so we want to make sure that we understand that diagnosis because it's like having a label without an operations manual. Having a label without an operations manual is not helpful. (laughs) It's not helpful. And so we have to get associated and comfortable with the symptoms along with that that allow you to speak intelligently. Because I'm sure that that world changer who was in that restaurant, if she had the chance to explain what was going on, then she probably would have gotten a different reaction from the world changer around. And so when I record these episodes, it's not just for my world changers who have sugars with diagnosis. It's also for us who are out there who have typically developing kids and we've raised our kids or we have typically developing kids and we don't have these same experiences. But if we have a little bit more understanding and empathy, then the way that we react to the greater world around us will make this world a better place and give us the ability to show grace and mercy and humility when faced with uncomfortable or atypical situations, right? So important. Another thing can occur, denial. Ooh, denial. Ooh, denial. Denial. Denial is an ugly enemy that robs you from the truth, world changer. Pretending that something is happening doesn't make it go away. It's happening. Is happening. And so denial can come in a few different ways. Ignoring sugar's behavior, pretending like it's not going on, interpreting it in a way to where it's not associated with the the diagnosis. It's just them being them. And maybe a part of that is character, but in some cases it's not. Deflecting to avoid meltdowns or sicky situations. That means just giving in. Giving in in some way, shape, form, or fashion to whatever it is that they want or trying to present them something else that's more desirable that'll get them out of that situation to to where you don't even have to handle or think about or deal with what is happening right in front of your eyes. That is a form of denial. This can also eventually lead to isolation. Why? Because who wants to have the same question or the same judgments over and over and over again? And this isolation can have an impact on mental health. Because again, we were born to be in community with each other and who we choose to be in community with when we're in adulthood, that's our choice, but we do need some kind of community around. And robbing ourselves of community for 18 years or longer, especially if it's a profound diagnosis, right? That's that's not the way to go. That's not the way to go. The final thing that can occur is resentment. Resentment for your child being differently wired. Resenting family and friends who don't understand your perspective, sometimes even in your own house, your spouse, who interprets it differently. That's why I I suggest you listen to a united front so you guys can be on the same page because no one, no world changer should walk this alone. Even for you world changers who decided you no longer wanted to be Uh, together as a family, you no longer want it to be a union, still walking this out together because you created this sugar together and they deserve both parents to be a part of that because both of you guys have something special to offer. Resenting anyone who opposes you or what you're facing, 
And this could be when somebody gives advice or somebody comments or something like anything that is contrary to the practices that you already have in place, right? Why? Because without processing and understanding what's going on, it's difficult to deal with expressing those feelings associated, different stressors that you have, not the child stressors, but your personal stressors associated with that, making peace with that. Am I okay with this diagnosis? It happened, but am I okay with it? Am I okay with the behaviors that came along with it? They may be happening, but I might not be okay with it. I'm not okay with this. I didn't ask for this. Well, I know. I know. But we can be proactive and tool ourselves up in a way to where we push to progress and we make this stuff as good as we can make it and as great as it can be. Because there's something special about every sugar who was placed on this planet and every sugar in some way, shape or form has a purpose. And it's up to us, right? It goes back to that presentation, how we take this information in, how we present it to our community, how we handle it, right? How are we being proactive to make this the best that it can be? We can do that world changers. We can, we can face this head on. So you want to have these three areas in check. You want to make sure that these three areas are balanced and remember, world changer, you're not the first family with a diagnosis. You're not the first family with this diagnosis. Think back 60 years, 70 years, 80 years, 100 years, 200 years. When these same things were happening in other world changers families. And they didn't even have the support, the community support or access to a quarter of the tools that you have access to today. Huge, right? Think about the babies who were being put in these homes for life when they were raised differently or born differently. You have a leg up because you have so much access to so much information and a network of people who want to love you and know you and understand exactly what you're facing. Exactly what you're facing. So that's why you got to access that community. Because remember, the people before you, they didn't always have that, but you do. And you have the power to make it even better for the people who come after you. And so this is our steps. This is how we access community. Find a therapist, whoever's on your sugars team that specializes in your sugars diagnosis or has an experience of working with sugars who have similar diagnosis, and they're willing to work with not just sugar on their goals, but also with you, with a heart of a teacher who's going to be there with your family and walk with your family thick and thin, right? My last episode, I talked about how that relationship with your therapist, it should seriously feel like another family member. It it really should. If it's going the way that it should go, it should feel like that's another trusted family member somebody's a space where this person understands exactly what's going on and they're tooling me up in a way to where when I leave this place, I can deal with this. I can face the world head on, head on, confidently. And when it gets sticky, I could talk about it with them and they're not going to judge me and they're not going to get mad at me and they're not going to think I'm silly or stupid. They're just going to be like, hey, let's try it again another way, right? Get in community with other families. I can't emphasize this enough. It's not enough to be with the therapist. I've even learned I'm not enough. I'm not enough. Community with people who have faced this, somebody with more experience than you, who's ahead of the game, somebody with either the same or less experience with you. So you have somebody walking with you, somebody pulling you, somebody walking with you and somebody you're pulling along because as we learn more and as we understand more and as we grow stronger together, then and only then can we make impact with how we present this to the world around us, right? We're not an island. We're not an island. We're not meant to be an island. And so get that community, find that community and get educated. I can't overemphasize getting educated, not only about your sugar's diagnosis, but also on parent stressors, parent outcomes. Are your feelings normal? How do I cope with this? How do I get a break? Is it appropriate to want a break? Is it appropriate 
to want to go night night? Is it appropriate? Like what's appropriate? Is it appropriate to feel stressed out? Like in a way that other world changers may not even understand, like tell me, help me along the way, right? Help me deal with when people are judging me when I go out in the world. How do I deal with that? That's real stuff because taking that stuff on and taking that stuff in and holding that stuff in, nobody forgets that stuff. It just gets buried away. But there's ways that you can deal with that in a healthy, productive way. And that comes through community support and just being able to process these things, not just being healthy for sugar, being healthy for yourself, right? Raising a sugar is the most rewarding, fun, and challenging thing I've ever embarked on. Like it has been a roller coaster raising my sugars and also having a part in helping other world changers raise their sugars. But I also understand that having a sugar who is differently wired or who has a different diagnosis, even if it's something as simple as a speech sound diagnosis, right? Because there's different stressors that come along with that on the playground with sugars asking, why do you sound like that? Right? That stuff is real. And so when we have these world changers who have to deal with this, especially when the future seems uncertain and you're not sure what's the outcome, we don't know 20 years from now if the future doesn't seem like it's going to be a normal one. We don't know that, right? And we certainly can't know it if we're not putting ourselves in a position to where we're tooling sugar up, tooling ourselves up and having the right team around us to make sure that we're getting what we need and getting us where we need to go, right? Different questions, different concerns come up and you need to be able to address those questions. You don't have to be alone. You don't have to be an island. You don't have to feel like you're the only one going through this because for thousands of generations, this has been going on. But we're the first generation over the last 60 or 70 years to start sounding the bell and saying, hey, this is happening, but we can get through this. And there's nothing wrong with sugar. There's nothing wrong with us. We just have to approach parenting in a different way. So world changer, I can't emphasize enough that there's no such thing as a silly question, rather an unanswered question, not only for your sugar, but also for you and for the people who are coming behind you and the people who are a little bit ahead of you. That wraps stuff up for me today, world changers. That's all I got to say. I've said enough, all right? If nothing else, I got us all thinking. World changers, we got to start this year off right, getting the right tools in the right place to make the right progress in our sugar's growth and development. I don't care what's going on when we leave this house, what's going on when we watch the news. We can still provide the best quality of life for our sugars to make sure that they become the best them that they can become and we can provide the best opportunity for them. And part of that is educating ourselves and finding community so we can be healthy for them. And I got some tools for you today. I I do have some tools and no, I'm not an affiliate. I don't get anything out of this. These are just people who have produced these wonderful tools that I think will be helpful for our community. One. Debbie Reber, Differently Wired. She was on my show back in 2020 and she talked about her experience raising a neurodivergent child who's differently wired. And this is her experience as a parent. And so what I love about this is it's not a therapist. She's not a therapist. She talks about therapy, but she's not a therapist. And so she's giving her experience. She has a whole career in front of her and a whole career, an amazing career, behind her that's going to continue to grow and thrive. But she now does a lot of advocacy and talking to other world changers out there who are in the same boat that she was in. That's what I'm talking about, world changers. Great things happening. Elizabeth Sauter, she's actually local to the Bay Area as well. And she has a book that just dropped, Making Social, Make Social and Learning, excuse me, I can't talk, Make Social and Emotional Learning Stick. And this is from a therapist. She's a speech therapist and she's been working with social and emotional learning for years. I think since like 1996. And this provides practical tools that are functional, functional. That's one of my favorite words, functional tools and can get sugar through the day. This is the kind of stuff that we need to be gearing ourselves up with, right? Not just one aspect, but fully globally tooling ourselves up with community and with literature that's gonna be supportive to us, right? Our emotional selves, so we can have our feelings validated and also tools that'll get us to where we need to go. 
Both of those links are in the show notes below. And if you have any questions about this episode or past episodes, please do not hesitate to reach out to me at questions at I've got this kid.com. Join our community. Join our mailing list. It can be found directly on my website at iheartspeechtherapy.com. Past episodes and blogs can be found there too. You can also follow me on social media for event followings and weekly wisdom, advice, thought-provoking information that pushes us all to progress. Join us next week where we will be discussing getting a second opinion. When should parents get a second opinion? Ooh, when should parents get a second opinion? I can't wait to tune into that one. This episode will provide guidance for sticky situations when dealing with professionals. How do I trust my gut? Are they right? Am I wrong? We will cover that all next week and I can't wait to meet you there. I'm going to be there. First one there. (laughs) Last one leaving, (laughs) y'all. Until the next time, world changers, take care.